Okay, let's uh, let's get you an introduction to um, to the 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 actual meat and potatoes of your of your class of what you're going to be learning this semester. Um, we're, we're, research is very much about reality, whether or not it is even observable, um, whether or not it's objective to the degree that we can study it scientifically. There's this question. It's a huge epi epistemological topic. And intellectual social workers like you, people who have PhDs or are getting them in DSWs, love talking about this primarily because um, it, legitima it legitimizes qualitative research by saying we cannot objectively observe any phenomenon because we are only human and only see our data from our own suggest, suggest, uh, sub, subjective lens. Um, qualitative research does less measuring and more talking. We, talk, we ask people to talk about their um, feelings. It's ask them to do entire narratives about their experiences in qualitative research. Nobody's um, set up any kind of experiment and um, nobody's really measuring how much or how little of anything. It's all about the depth of a person's experience and then we add depth of another person's experience and depth of another person's experience and pretty soon all of that depth um, saturates a per, uh, the experience of humankind um, on a particular question. Um, so intellectuals, people who do only qualitative research are in one camp um, and there are intellectuals who only do measurable, measuring observable outcomes and those are your qual quantitative people. Most of, and not most, but it is more, it's in vogue now to do kind of a mix, to have some quantitative and some qualitative aspect to your, um, to your study, your dissertation. Here at the Institute is heavily, heavily qualitative, but that doesn't mean that, that you have to be do it that way. You might, you might do your research design um, in, uh, in a methodology that we discuss in our classroom uh, that, that's purely quantitative. It's going to be up to you and it's going to be based upon the uh, subject and the subjects that you are, um, the people that you're, that you're studying. Um, so, so it's true that we allow everybody their own interpretation of reality. And, and this, this is really what it means to be a postmodern thinker. So if everybody has their own interpretation of reality, then you really can't measure it and say that one is more um, prevalent than another. But you could try. But generally speaking, we, we respect every person's personal reality, their own um, spin on, on the truth. And that sounds counterintuitive. It sounds different than, um, than what we were saying before. It sounds almost as if like you're making individuals authorities. Well, no, not really, because we're using a lot of individuals and we're, we're adding up all, a lot of authorities to give a, um, a, a um, how should I say it, a, a range and depth. This is for qualitative study of, uh, of experience. Um, but postmodernism is all about everybody has their right to their own reality. And yet, if we agree, if we all can agree on a way to observe phenomena, and we all try to observe it in the same way, then it is possible to quantify observations and to say that there is a likelihood that, X is ha that if X is happening, then Y might be there. It doesn't have to be that complicated. If we want to determine percentages, we can calculate risks and possibilities. We just have to agree on how we're going to do that. All of the social sciences, history, economics, sociology, etc., refer to their own particular paradigms to understand human behavior. A paradigm is a model or a scheme, a way of organizing observations. It is a unique way of looking at something. A symbolic interactionist paradigm implies that people behave the way they do because of the way they socialize. A functionalist would say that they behave in ways that work for them. 
that they use social systems and structures because they're utilitarian. The conflict paradigm of human behavior is about power and resources. To the victors go the spoils, and the people would, and people would rather fight to win to have things. They behave in ways that serve them. That's conflict paradigm. Social work research relies primarily upon three different paradigms. Positivism, which is knowledge based upon observation as opposed to, say, loyalty. Well, we're running out of the hourglass, so maybe we'll stop, and I'll give you the three social work paradigms in the eighth video.